Hey guys, this is Undercover Dudes, and these are the best new Crunker.io settings for 2021 and beyond. Yes, my friends, it's been a year since my last settings videos, and you guys have been asking me for an update. And to be fair, a lot of stuff has changed in Crunker.io. So in today's video, I'm going to show you guys my Crunker.io settings. And these are perfect if you're a beginner to the game or if you're a veteran. Very clean, very simple, and you get good FPS. Now, if you guys haven't signed up for Crunker.io, yet, please go and use my referral link in the description below. It's by far the best way to support the channel. It's completely free to make an account and it is a really, really great way to start playing this awesome game. And if you guys are buying any KR in the Crunker.io store, make sure to use creator code UCD. Put it in that box, hit that save button and whenever you buy KR, you're directly supporting the channel. But with that said, my friends, let's get straight into it and I'll show you guys my settings. Alright my friends, let's get into it and these are my Crunker.io settings as of right now. These settings are clean, simple, really easy to follow, and also you get amazing FPS. I'm getting 700 right now while recording. So to go and customize your settings, go to the bottom left-hand corner of your Crunker menu and click settings, and you'll go and see quite a few options. Now moving over to controls, the first thing is keybinds. And in my opinion, the keybinds for Crunker, the default ones are pretty damn decent. So you've got forward, backwards, left, right, all of that. I would just go and keep that decent. Default. Now the only things I've changed here are my weapon binds because I like them being on my mouse because on default it's T, Q and E. But me personally I like going and selecting my primary weapon with my mouse thumb button which is this top one right here. Now for my melee I like it on E so it's on E and then for secondary weapon I like it on the bottom button on my mouse here so mouse 4 and that's just my personal preference. Next up we have gameplay and gameplay settings. Settings. Now, if you go over to here, it says all and then per weapon. I really recommend just having it on all. Having different sensitivities and different settings for different classes and weapons is just going to go and screw up your aim. So go and keep it just on all and keep them all the same. Now for me personally, my X and Y sensitivity and my AMX and AMY sensitivity are all 1.45. So if I go in game, I move my mouse left to right, up and down, that is all 1.45. And if I go in aim in and then move left to right, up and down, it is the exact same so when I scope in it doesn't go and decrease my sensitivity again this is personal preference but I just like keeping my muscle memory exactly the same whether I'm aiming or moving normally so it keeps everything consistent now in the display tab there's a lot of stuff going on but we'll just go and talk about the really important stuff UI scale. Now on default, this is actually quite high. I currently have it on 0.8, but if you go and bring it down to let's say 0.4, as you can see, you can see a lot more stuff on your screen. Dynamic HP bars are actually pretty cool. So if I go in game right here and I find an opponent, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So you see this guy here, I type in, uh, hit him and see how his, it went white and then it went uh, to red. And as you can see right here, same with him. And I go and hit him again and I hit him again. So it's just a bit more of a, a visual, a bit more of a dynamic dynamic way to see HP going down and I kind of like it. All of these really simple and just keep them on. HP bars, hit indicators, color, just keep it default. Show damage like the Fortnite damage numbers. Really nice to see how much damage you've done to an enemy. Keep this all the same, same as the crit. The damage scale have, however, I think the default is a little bit large. So the default damage is quite large. It's actually 1.0 scale, but I think uh, it needs to be a little bit lower. So I have it at 0.7. Now this big block of show stuff, there's a few things you need to keep on. Kill feed, yes. Kill counter, yes. Death counter, yes. Now in the top right hand corner, you don't need to show your KD, so I keep that off. And also my score, don't really care, but my streak, I want to know if I'm getting close to a nuke, go and keep that on. And as you can see in the top right hand corner, shows my kills, deaths, and my current streak. Ping and FPS, make sure those are on. As you can see, top right hand corner shows my FPS and my ping. This is currently glitched, but if I hop in game and I see in the top left hand corner, shows my FPS and my ping as well. 19, 600 FPS, it's good to know. Now movement speed is pretty cool. By default, it doesn't go and show you. So if I go onto the settings right here, 
here and then scroll down, it's not on. But if I turn it on, it goes and shows you your movement speed in the middle of your screen. So the, uh, the yellow one is your current speed and then your red is the max for your life. In my opinion, kind of dog water. So I've got mine in my bottom left hand corner and it's just kind of cool to look at once in a while to see how fast I'm going. Now scrolling down, we've got name tag display, opacity and style. Now I suggested going and keep it just on everything, but then scroll down to style. And as you can see here, it says everything, name only, name and level only and health only. So if I go in game right here and I go and see one of my opponents, it will go and show that person's name and their level. And this is, if you're, if you're versing somebody that's really high level and you're new to crunk it, it can be a little bit, a little intimidating. So what you can do is change this to health only, and then when you see your enemies, they will only go and show the health, not their name, not their rank, so you won't be intimidated if it's a, you know, a really high level player or a professional player, whatever. They're just all normal players to me. XP bar, non-tradable skins, just keep that the same. The chat box, you can go and have it as always, or while focused, so while you're typing, I just keep it on always profanity filled if you don't want to see any swearing and these settings I just keep them default now for crosshair it is really really simple this is my crosshair in Crunker. it's just a green crosshair just a green cross in in the middle of my screen really really simple really really easy now by default it's dynamic just go to the drop down and click precision custom opacity just keep this on one and go and click always show because that means when you go and aim down sight it keeps your crosshair and this is important for later on for my color it's just green so as you can see it's this color right here just a default color shadow color i don't have any shadow so it doesn't matter because as you can see it is zero my thickness 1.6 size 5 gap 1 and no dot and this is a really simple crosshair now in a recent update they also have a custom crosshair for throwing so i have this one for my normal one and then for my throwing it simply is just a dot. It's just a nice little dot just showing me, hey, it's not a, a normal gun now. It's actually my throwing knife. To do that, super, super simple. You go here, you choose the same green as before, zero, 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 zero. So if you want to go and make it a little bit bigger, you can put it on like three and a half. And then, and then as you can see, it doesn't turn it into just a singular dot. It turns it into a bit of a chunky crosshair, but I just like keeping it as a simple dot. Now let's quickly go through render. There is a lot of options, but we're going to go through it pretty speedy. Now for resolution, I have it on two. This is how it looks in game. Please don't do what I do here. Go and put it on one. It looks pretty much the same, maybe a little bit worse. If you have a really good computer, Sure, go and put it on two as a bit of a flex, but it doesn't matter. If you have a bad PC, you can bring it down to 0 0.5, 0 0.4. This will make the game look a little bit worse, but even on 0.4, it's actually not that bad. The game only looks pretty awful around the 0 0.2 and 0 0.1. So if you have a pretty bad PC, a Chromebook or a bad laptop, keep it around this will go and save you some frames, which is good. But for the majority of you guys, keep it on one. Now for frame cap, just don't go and use this. It's kind of broken. It doesn't cap your frames at a normal level i just wouldn't use it at all now for aspect ratio by default it's just on native so 16 by 9 1920 by 1080 for me 2560 by 1440 but you can also go down here and use like a stretch resolution by 1440 by 1080 that stretches out your game it makes your characters look a little bit wider but it doesn't really do anything so just keep it on default and the next we've got anti-aliasing low spec no textures all these type of settings but let's keep it very very, very simple. Anti-aliasing, it makes the game look quite a lot nicer, but it goes and hits your FPS. It goes and gives a little bit, little bit more detail. For most people, don't keep it on. Low spec is kind of cool. It doesn't show the legs of your opponent. So if you want to practice your aim of just chest and up, this is something that you can turn on. No textures, pretty simple. Map details, pretty simple. You have this on, you get details. You have this on, you have no textures whatsoever. Particles, it just goes and shows some floaty bits here and there. I keep it on just as a nicety. Now bullet trails, this is actually quite important. Now hopping in game, when I fire, see there isn't a bullet trail. However, if I go and turn that setting on, 
it does go and show my bullet trails. If I go here, I go and fire. See, does that bullet trail in the air right there. I've just gone and had that off so it doesn't show it. However, I have bullet trails on for everybody else. So this guy right here, see, I can see his bullet trails and I went and took him out. So I can see the, the rocket launcher or the, uh, the rockets being fired towards me. It's a really important setting to turn on to see where your opponents are firing. So please keep this on and then turn this one off. All right, so I'm editing the video and I saw I didn't talk about muzzle flash. So as you can see, I have it turned on. And if we hop in game and start firing, as you can see, the flash occurs once every while. It's not too distracting. It's, it's fine. And that's why I usually keep it on. It looks kind of cool. However, I have got very, very high FPS. I've got 700, 500 FPS. I'm usually playing at least 300, 400 FPS. However, if you have lower FPS and you have a not so good PC, let's say you're playing at 60 FPS, as you can see, the muzzle flash is very, very bright. It's always in your face. And this is particularly bad if you're aiming down sights. See how it's just flashing, continually, continually flashing? This is something you don't want. I'm honestly not sure how it's coded into the game, but if you go up to 300 FPS, see how it goes and happens once in a while? It's kind of a cool effect, but on low FPS, it is very, very, very distracting. So muzzle flash, go and turn it off. Sniper flap, who cares? Just turn it off. Texture animations, object animations, keep that on screen shake so when you go and I uh, get shot and stuff goes and happens around you your screen will go and shake really just go and turn it off like it's just really distracting like these guys like why even have it on for editing we have so many options but the ones I want to go and talk about are speed lines really quickly so when you go and slide hop in crunker.io you will go and get speed lines speed lines are like you know the anime lines and stuff like that by default they're on one and as you can see they're really distracting the one thing that does go and matter is saturation so you see guys like Kashi and a lot of twitch streams they They'll, they'll have their saturation cranked. So if you go in game, this is free saturation and it looks really, really vibrant. It does, however, tank your FPS just a little bit. And I think at three, it's a little bit aggressive. I think the maximum you should do is like, you know, two, but I usually keep it at about 1.2. So my game is rather undersaturated, but I go and buff it up in post-processing when you guys see it in the YouTube video. Now, color hue, kill feed limit, all of that, who cares? Bullet traces though, kind of important. If you go and hop in game and I go and fire, as you can go and see, it doesn't go and show my traces, but it'll show the traces of my enemies. That was because of the bullet trails and your trails setting that we set up before. So go and turn that off, keep that on, and you are all good. Now for view, field of view settings, this is where things get a little bit important. Now with field of view, this is basically how much you can go and see to your left and right. To see what I mean, this is on 100, so you can see to the left and to the right quite easily. If you go and put it up to like 150, you can see heaps to the left and heaps to the right, but it goes and give you, gives you this really weird warping. In all honesty, where you need to be is probably around the 85 to 95 to 100 zone. This is up to you. I'm currently on 100, but I am always, always going and changing it. So if I bring it onto 90, which I think is quite nice, it is really, really easy. You just see the people in front of you, you see a little bit to your left a little bit to your right but you focus on the people in the middle tldr keep it around the 85 to 95 zone and you'll be perfect weapon fov this is for your actual weapon so as you can see i've got it on 95 if you bring it out to 150 i get the uh spaghetti noodle arms right here and of course if you bring it down to 60 you've got the uh, call of duty console inside your body looks pretty disgusting so Keep it on 95 around there, you're gonna be good. Weapon bobbing, this is how much your weapon goes and bobs left to right. So if you go on three here, your weapon's just going crazy. I have it on 0 0.6, a little bit of movement, but really not too much. And I think it is a pretty decent setting, but if you go bring it down to zero, your gun just stays stationary and it's a little bit boring. Now for weapon X, Y, and Z offset, this is again, personal preference. For me, 1.4, 1.3, 1 is just nice center kind of offset to the right it looks nice it's chill it's simple and it looks like pretty much any other first person shooter now weapon adsy offset now this is pretty important now when you go and aim down sight and you have always crosshair on as you go and see the gun is basically in line with the crosshair but the gun's actually blocking quite a lot 
So what I do is I put this on to about 1.7, maybe 1. Point, so let's put on 1.6. And as you can see, the gun is a little bit lower. It's not blocking so much of my view and it makes it easier for me to go and hit headshots. Now this right here is a little bit different to my old settings because previously in, you know, older seasons of Krunker, I used to use a thing called hide weapon on ADS. So if you have the always crosshair option on, so as we talked about before, always crosshair, always show if you have that on, and then you go down to your game tab, scroll down to hide weapon or ADS and turn it on. That goes and makes your weapon disappear while you're aiming down sight. If you guys want to experiment with not showing your gun, those were my old settings and they worked out really well. Now I've gone to the default settings to show you this next part. So customization, load mods, allow logo changes, like whatever, who cares? But scope borders by default is on. And if I go over to my sniper rifle right here, you can actually go and change your scope. But the default scope right here is this one. So if you go in game, this this is what the default in game you'll see it like this and it's terrible you've got this massive black border around you can't see to your left to your right and probably one of the first things you want to change in Krunker is this exact thing so you go down to game go down to around here scope borders turn it off you turn scope borders off so you've turned that off but you still have this terrible like black border man phase rain used this for way too long when he was playing Krunker. so we need to go and fix that so you go to customize you go over to the scope here on your uh, sniper class and then go and either turn it off or change it to another one so you can do mo moon juices and that looks pretty cool you can do swixies and if you go here uh, go back here sorry and then just go and turn it off as you go and see, it doesn't go and show a crosshair, but we use that in combination with our always show crosshair stuff. So I'll go and download my settings again. We hop in game. See, it just doesn't go and show a scope. It just goes and shows my crosshair. It is really simple, really easy. It is just probably one of the most simplest ways for a nice crosshair and nice scope in this game. And those are my Krunker settings. Once you've put them in, go and hit the upload button. They'll be on your account and you're good to go.